Hey everyone, this is Jason and we're going to be going over the decorator design pattern. This is part one of a two-part little series. The second part we're going to be talking about the Zen framework and their use of the decorator pattern. And I decided to do this so you could get an understanding of how it all works to begin with, then we'll look at it in Zen. We're going to be using a Subway sandwich in this example just to try to make things a little bit easier. And these are the main classes we're going to be using. The bread, the toppings, and the order. Now in the decorator design pattern, you can't connect bread to the toppings right away. You have to go through the order. I'll explain that in the code, so let's get started. Okay, so now that we're at our code, we have a class right here. This is the abstract class order and the abstract public function add to order. Now, I know you probably already printed out that really fancy diagram I made. You put it on your wall because you're just amazed at my skill here. But uh, remember, the one important part about that is that the bread and the toppings have to go through the order in order to work. So that's why it's abstract, because we're going to be extending it and using this method in other places. So let's go ahead and look at our bread class right here. Now this is our base class. Now why do I call it the base class? Because this is going to be our base. This string bread right here is going to be our base because we need something to decorate. We can't just decorate nothing. There has to be something there. So obviously if you're getting a sandwich, you have to have bread every time if you want to make a sandwich. Whatever toppings you put on, go for it, but you need bread. So just to show you how this works, this is extremely simple. This actually doesn't use any decorators here, but I just want to show, make sure you understand what we're doing here. So if I make a new bread object right here and set it equal to S, and then we're going to go ahead and echo out add to order, which is just going to return the string bread. What happens? We have bread right here. So it works. Nothing big. You probably haven't uh, had any life-changing moments right now. So this is all the same. This is nothing new right here. What we need to do is look into our decorators. So we're going to have a decorator class. Here's a decorator class. I'm calling it toppings. And keep in mind it extends order and keep in mind it's abstract as well. Why is it abstract? Because remember this function add to order, remember what it did in the bread. It returned bread, our base, right? Well, if we wanted to work with lettuce and tomatoes or other toppings, we need a way to send this function all the way up to the lettuce and tomatoes. So we do that through the abstract, then we make another abstract, and then basically catapult it all the way up to here to where we can use it. So what we're doing here in our decorator class right here is setting a variable called my sandwich as a protected variable and we have a constructor right here and look at this it's sending in an object right here now I have in my notes right here this equals the class bread which is true we're gonna have our foundation our bread and then we're gonna send it over to the topping section and decorate it or add toppings to it this is exactly like how they do it at Subway this is essentially them moving the bread down the counter to where all the toppings are so they can put it on. That's what this basically does. You take it over to the right place where it can access everything. So this sandwich variable right here is basically in a way the bread string itself and then we're going to start adding things to it. And I'll show you this. Let's go to our tomatoes class here. So the first time we go through, let's say tomatoes are going to be the first thing we add to it. Well basically all of this right here is going to be bread and then we're just going to add a plus tomatoes to it and we can keep doing that as much as we want and that's the fun part about the decorator design pattern and I'll tell you why let me just show you how it works so we have a new bread right here right for a sandwich but let's go and add tomatoes to it new tomatoes and surround it we're gonna wrap it in there and let's refresh and there we go bread plus tomatoes so what's happening is it's jumping in and I want to go ahead and add one more. I want to add a lettuce to this too. We can add whatever combination we want of as many as we want. doesn't matter. That's the fun part about this decorator design pattern. And why is that fun? No, it's not because I've gone completely crazy, but it's fun because if I didn't use the decorator design pattern, I would have to make a class for every single possible combination that exists in a Subway sandwich and putting it together. What, do you want two tomatoes and one lettuce? Well, I've got to make a class for that. Do I want two tomatoes and two lettuces? Well, i got to make a class for that. 
Now with the decorator design pattern, with this you only do it once, a simple instance of each one, lettuce and tomatoes, and then as you can see in here, you can add it in any combination you want. So let's go ahead and add a new lettuce to this as well. Now I'll kind of illustrate a little bit better. And let's refresh. Bread, tomatoes, lettuce, and lettuce. So it's adding it on. It's essentially wrapping it around as you can see right here. That is the magic of decorators and the design decorator pattern. I don't have to create a class for every possible combination. So this saves me a ton of code and a ton of time because it all works dynamically. And what I mean by dynamically is every time I just create a new class right here, it automatically knows, oh, let's add a new topping to it. I don't have to create or manually do anything myself. It's all done automatically. And let's go ahead and look into our actual toppings here. So all we're doing is this is the same class from an abstract order method that we had at the very beginning. And all we're doing is taking in this and adding tomatoes to it. So think about this. Let's go back to our bread here. We have a bread, then tomatoes, and then lettuce. So what happens to this last lettuce here? What's actually going on? Well, first it has to go through toppings because we're calling a new lettuce, right? Well, if we go to a new lettuce here, we're extending toppings, so which means we got to jump into toppings here, take in this object. So this object right now equals bread, tomatoes, and lettuce. We're going to set it right here. We're going to jump right back into tomatoes. And this is, like I said, this is going to be bread, tomatoes, and lettuce. And then we're going to add lettuce. I was in the wrong class. Add lettuce to it. So it works like that. And let me go in and show you really quick. This is pretty cool. We're going to dump everything. Why not? Let's dump this variable right here and see what's actually inside of it after we set it right here. So let's go ahead and refresh that. Let's bring this up. So the first time we go through, we have an object. That my sandwich variable equals an object bread. The second time through, Bread is still there, but now it has tomatoes wrapped on top of it. Next time, lettuce, tomatoes, bread. And because the last time it executes, it doesn't go through that entire process, it just has a lettuce in the end. So it never includes the last one on there. And that's how the decorator design pattern works. Now what I'm going to do is go through each page, and hopefully the quality is good enough that you can go ahead and copy and paste everything from here and play around with it on your own. So I have a single directory and I have five files within it. So I'll show you that real quick. We're going to go into here and we're going to go into my demos folder, decorators. So I have these five right here. These are the same five you see up in here. So go ahead and create those. You can name them the same way if you'd like. Bread, lettuce, order, tomatoes, and topping. And what's happening is I'll let you stop the movie right here to copy this one and then I'll let you stop and copy this one. And what's going on right here, this is just including or requiring once all the files that are in the directory besides itself, I guess. It actually probably is including itself. Um, and then we're going to go to our decorator class right here. Go ahead and copy this. Our lettuce class, you can stop and copy that. And our tomatoes class, stop and copy that. And if you don't have a perfect understanding of it just yet, keep in mind this is a very abstract type of topic. And go ahead and copy everything down, play around with it, and just take out things. You know, move stuff around. Name things differently. Error messages are huge in this thing. If you take out something like abstract here, and then save it, and then we go back and run it, we get an error right here, and it's because the add to order was not sent all the way because it's not an abstract class. You can't catapult this original add to order all the way up to tomatoes if you don't abstract this class. So it's things like that that I can't really use or spell in the few minutes that I want to spend on YouTube talking about this. So the best way to do this is copy and paste everything. Try it on your own. Learn and hopefully you'll eventually get this whole decorator design pattern and why we use it. And in my next video, we're going to be going over the decorator design pattern again, but in the Zen framework, because the Zen framework uses this pattern. And when we go over it, you'll be able to see the basis, foundation, of how all this works in the Zen framework and what it's actually doing. And that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them, and I will be happy to address them, and we'll make this uh, as good of a place as can be to understand the decorator design pattern. Thank you all very much.